The earliest vision of taking the game above the rim came from the Minneapolis Lakers' George Mikan, but he rarely jammed in a game. It wasn't until the arrival of Wilt Chamberlain that fans saw just how dynamic the dunk could be. As he overpowered opponents, nothing stood between Wilt and the rim. Long pass into Chamberlain. Chamberlain with a dunk shot. Oh, beautiful. Chamberlain again underneath. Great shot by Chamberlain. While Wilt launched the dunk as a weapon, it was Elgin Baylor who began to take it airborne as one of the true pioneers of NBA flight. Elgin was the first one that I remember to hang up there for 15 seconds, had some lunch and a cup of coffee. His hang time was incredible. Following Elgin, the next player to soar into the spotlight was fittingly nicknamed the Hawk, Connie Hawkins. I had never seen a guy who can actually fly in the air and had the arm span as well as the hands to control the basketball until Connie Hawkins. Connie Hawkins with the ball. Look at the way he palms that ball. Six minutes to go inside the Hawkins. But in the late 60s, the jam would reach a new level of creativity thanks to a new league. Here's George Mikan, commissioner of the ABA. You know, I've been associated with basketball all my life. And I can't remember an occasion which has given me more personal satisfaction than the basketball game you are going to see in just a few seconds. The ABA was started on the idea of being entertaining. The ABA was bringing showmanship to the game. And the league's greatest show on earth, or above it, was the dunk. In 1976, the shot arrived on center stage when the ABA held the first ever slam dunk contest. We knew we had some outstanding leapers in uh, the ABA, and so that was a chance for us to showcase our skills. Larry Keenan, turn around. George Gerber was in the slam dunk, Artis Gilmore, and uh, of course, myself and Dr. J. It came down to uh, David Thompson uh, and, my, and myself. goes to work. It was good to see David and, and Julius go head to head, you know, to show some of the dunks that, you know, you couldn't believe guys was doing at that time. I saved my specialty for last. I went baseline and did a 360 dunk. Oh, Twist around, slam dunk. I thought I was going to win, but now it was Dr. J's turn. I think it was somewhat of a defining moment, a piece of, piece of basketball history. And throughout his ABA career, Irving would make the jam his trademark with a combination of style, grace, and power. And there is Julius Irving. Look at that move behind the back. Oh! It wasn't Julius Irving, it was Dr. J, which meant when he got on the floor, on the court, he operated on God. He always had the big afro. You know, his hair would always be flying in the back as he flying through the air. He had these large old hands, you see, when he palmed the ball, it looked like a little orange in his hand. To Dr. J. He was, in the ABA, the symbol of the league. He wasn't just its biggest star, he was the league. And when Julia Serving came to the NBA with the Philadelphia 76ers, the entire basketball world would get a chance to witness his exploits. You dunk the ball over a little guy. I mean, you're supposed to, right? <laughs> but now you get a guy 6'10", 6'11", 7 feet, pull a playoff on him, and uh, he's got something to think about. There's the man I pick in the slam dunk contest. Julius is unbelievable in a wide open situation. My first year in Philadelphia, the rookies on the team, any time I got a breakaway shot, they would always say, poster. And what they referred to is anybody tempting to block it, we're going to end up being in a poster. He here he comes. We rock the baby to sleep and slam dunk. Julius was able to go to another level as a basketball player. And when you get to that arena, as long as they saw the doctor perform and do something spectacular, Whoa. they went home happy. He put a little extra one on that one. My style was naturally uh, flamboyant. What a play by Irving. That was, you know, playing instinctive basketball. It was just uh, letting it flow. Julius Irving! So, you know, my game was probably a little bit ahead of its time. Ladies and gentlemen, Dr. 